superpower of OpenZD tunnelers, private DNS. Basically, bring your own DNS. Don't worry about global DNS. No reliance upon DNS infrastructure. It ships right there with the code. That's right. And it's, it's, it's still, I would say in some ways, it relies on DNS infrastructure because there is a name server that is somewhere that satisfies these DNS queries, right? So in some ways, it relies on DNS, but it doesn't rely on the global DNS. This is totally private, entirely local DNS. And, and on top of that, it's also authenticated DNS, which means if you wanted to create a uh, an intercept, which is something like, you know, you know this is capture the flag B-sides. So let's just change this to uh, ZD dot, no, actually let's just do HTTP dot ZD. That's what I use a lot. Um, to any of these, these domains, which don't actually exist, you, you can actually copy or create, not copy, you can create these DNS names all on your own. And they're only accessible if you're running an open ZD tunneler. So, um, does that spark any thoughts or conversation from you? Yeah, it makes me think about the, so when you say authenticated DNS, what that tells me is that this little name server that comes with my services, it's tightly coupled. So that's always true, but it's also authenticated in the sense that it's going to create an IP listener, like a name server IP that's only available to me. And any answer I get back from that is true. Any answer you get back is true. No, that's not quite, right. that's not quite right. Like it's so authenticated like, in that it's, I can trust the, the answers I'm getting back from that name server. That's part of. If you get an answer page. back, that is, that is successful. Okay. Let's, let's right. say that a different way. If you query that name server that is provided by that tunneler on your operating system and you get a response, that response is authoritative for you for that Correct. time. Absolutely. That's a good word. That's actually a DNS term, authoritative versus uh, recursive, I think. That's another term. <laughs> yeah. right. So well, the idea being that by default, the normal behavior for the ZD name server that comes that's available from your tunneler is you, you get an IP that's automatically configured in your OS. So it uses that one first and any answer it gets back is quote authoritative in the DNS sense. That's right. It, and it stops. It doesn't answer other things. It says, nope, there's nothing here. I'm not authoritative for that. So you have to ask another name server. Yeah, exactly. And like I said before, it doesn't need a valid top level domain. So if you wanted to, to create these entries and give them to your friends, your mother, your family, whatever, that don't actually resolve anywhere on the open internet by anybody, Cloudflare, Google, whoever, uh, you can absolutely do that. And so all, all that, if you were not on OpenZD, they would just see these crazy DNS requests to these places that don't exist. And then when you're on OpenZD, all of a sudden you can resolve these, these crazy DNS names. That's pretty cool. Right. That's because it's not part of the global DNS. That's right. It's not at all. It's part DNS. of it's your own private DNS. It's your okay. DNS. That's right. So you and, can invent fictitious top level domains all day long. That's right. And good to go back to the auth authenticated part of that equation. Since it is open ZD, you must be authenticated before you can connect to OpenZD. Again, going back to zero trust principles. Uh, and then if you are ever unauthenticated, well, then suddenly you don't have access to those services and they no longer resolve because the tunneler will remove them for you. So that's uh, private DNS. And that's a pretty cool superpower of a tunneling application. Cool. Totally.